In the day's other news, President Trump leveled a new warning at Iran. It came as he weighs whether to withdraw from the multi-nation nuclear agreement with Iran next month. Mr. Trump discussed the issue with the visiting German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Afterward, he was asked if he would ever order a military strike on Iran to destroy a nuclear weapons program. Thank you very much. I don't talk about whether or not I'd use military force. It's not appropriate to be talking about. But I can tell you this. Uh, they will not be doing nuclear weapons. That I can tell you. Okay? They're not going to be doing nuclear weapons. You can bank on it. Iran has said its program is for peaceful purposes only and has warned the U.S. not to try to change the nuclear deal. Merkel said today that there is room for improvement in the agreement, but she asserted it has helped to contain Iran's nuclear ambitions and influence. The leaders of China and India began their own two-day summit today, seeking to ease strained ties. China's President Xi Jinping greeted India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi at a lakeside resort in central China. Xi called for greater cooperation. The world's two most populous nations are competing for influence across Asia and have long-standing border disputes. In the Middle East, violence erupted again at Gaza's border with Israel, with three Palestinians killed and scores wounded. Thousands of Gazans protested for the fifth Friday in a row, some burning tires and slinging stones. Dozens tried to break through the border fence, and Israeli troops answered with tear gas and live fire. Back in this country, the man accused of being the Golden State Killer was arraigned on two counts of murder. Former police officer Joseph D'Angelo appeared in court in Sacramento. He is suspected in 13 killings and nearly 50 rapes during the 1970s and 80s. Investigators say they finally cracked the case by using a genealogy website to match DNA. Teachers in Arizona and Colorado stayed off the job again today, keeping scores of schools closed. In Phoenix, tens of thousands of striking teachers rallied for a second day in near 100-degree heat. They are demanding pay raises and more. Meanwhile, thousands of Colorado teachers gathered near the state capitol in Denver after walking out of class in protest. An uproar swept the House of Representatives today over the ouster of Reverend Patrick Conroy as the House chaplain. Earlier this month, Speaker Paul Ryan asked him to resign, and Ryan told fellow Republicans that the Catholic priest was not meeting members' needs. Well, that set off arguments between the two parties. There were some questions about responsiveness, and it just seemed like it was time for, for a change. So that's something I think uh, is appropriate within the speaker's power to make. Pat's a good friend, someone whom uh, I've had great conversations with on the floor of the House. And uh, I've seen him uh, have those same relationships and those conversations uh, with both sides of the aisle, men and women on all sides. He's a beloved person here in the House uh, floor. Democrats said that Conroy's prayer before the vote on the Republican tax bill was the real reason for his firing. In it, he appealed for fairness for all. Ryan's office said today that there was no one prayer that led to the decision and said he believes that it is in the best interests of the House. Another member of the House of Representatives has resigned over sexual harassment allegations. Pennsylvania Republican Patrick Meehan stepped down today. He had already decided not to seek re-election. Meehan has acknowledged using taxpayer funds to settle a former AIDS harassment claim. Former NBC News anchor Tom Brokaw is denying that he groped and tried to kiss a former co-worker. In published accounts, Linda Vester says it happened twice in the 1990s. A second woman makes similar claims. Brokaw says that it never happened and called Vester someone with limited success in her career who, quote, has trouble with the truth. He is now 78 and remains a special correspondent for NBC. On the Russia investigation, a federal judge today rejected Paul Manafort's lawsuit challenging the special counsel's authority. Manafort is President Trump's former campaign manager. He faces charges unrelated to Russian election meddling or alleged collusion with the Trump campaign. Meanwhile, the House Intelligence Committee formally reported that it found no collusion. Democrats rejected that finding. The president said he was very honored. 
Wall Street had a mostly flat Friday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 11 points to close at 24,311. The Nasdaq rose a point, and the S&P 500 added three. For the week, all three indexes dropped a fraction of a percent. And the newest member of the British royal family has a name. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge announced today that their newborn son will be Louis Arthur Charles Windsor. It pays tribute to the baby's grandfather, Prince Charles, and to Charles's great uncle, Louis Mountbatten. Still to come on the news hour, the historic meeting between North and South Korea's leaders. Answers to some of the issues raised in our series on the plight of Rohingya refugees and the atrocities they face in Bangladesh camps. A caravan of asylum seekers arrive at the U.S. border and much more.